With the evolution of technology into daily life, we now live in a world of experience-driven global connectivity. People share moments on social media, people learn off YouTube. Technology was never there to help us tell these stories in the past. But today, it's unlocking the power to help us tell stories better than we've ever before. And with the rise of virtual and augmented reality technologies, we're being given a new opportunity to bridge those communication gaps even further through direct experience. The information age gave us practical tools and access to data, but today's tech-enabled generation is starting to favor content consumption based on how we experience it. Futurists have long theorized about a coming age where creativity and imagination become the primary creators of economic value. This is known as the imagination age. And to me, I'd say it's very much here now. By profession, I manage a, um, a design and development company that focuses on solving business challenges with technology-driven solutions. Most often, communication through virtual augmented reality. Now, some of you may be thinking that virtual and augmented reality can only be used in gaming and entertainment. But my team and I actually work across a number of surprising industries from utility hydro companies, to accounting firms, to, uh, to celebrity engagements, environmental organizations, and a lot of cannabis companies. In the real world, immersive technologies have unearthed a power to solve key communication gaps. And today I'd like to explore with you a few ways how. First, I'd like to bring those unfamiliar with these technologies up to speed. For the uninitiated, the premise of immersive technology is quite simple. Virtual reality is a fully enclosed digital environment that replaces the user's real world environment. Augmented reality is a digital overlay into the user's real world environment. Mixed reality is a combination hybrid of both AR and VR or physical and digital. Immersive is a surrounding sensory feeling and 360 is an omnidirectional view. And something like this can be achieved using a 360 capture camera like this. So my first introduction into, three, into immersive technology was through 360 capture and VR. Years ago, I used to run a music magazine and go to about 100 concerts a year, photographing and documenting them for my publication. My challenge was that even with photos and videos and a write-up, friends and family would still ask me to divulge more on the experience, my personal experience. And so I would tell them stories, pair it with more visuals, but it wasn't always easy to describe um, all the little details that add up to make the experience so special. Concerts to me were immersive, exhilarating, connected experiences. But I'm not very good with expression, and translating my emotions often felt indescribable or unexplainable. It dawned on me that my storytelling was missing a critical component, sensation. So I started experimenting with 360 capture devices and bringing them along with me to shows I was covering. I then put the 360 footage into a VR camera, a VR headset, and then um, that enabled a wraparound view when you looked inside. I, and then I started to um, show the experiences to different people, such as my parents, and this was my dad's reaction. So not only was it their first time experiencing what a music festival was like, but it allowed them to live vicariously and visually through my own personal experience. It broke down social boundaries, and it connected us together better. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, I can use photos and videos to tell my story, and that works just fine. There's a reason why they say a picture is worth a thousand words. But nowadays, a picture itself rarely feels enough to the human experience. Take this scenario, for example. You're sitting at home on a Friday night, Watching, watching Planet Earth on your 55-inch flat-screen TV. It's the antelope scene set amidst these huge, beautiful mountains. The narrative is strong, the storytelling is amazing, and it's beautifully shot. 
but what you're seeing is still a cropped binocular view of the story that's being told. As you pay attention further, you, you're still only watching the experience unfold, but not really experiencing it yourself firsthand. You don't feel the fear of being on that field alone. You don't feel the thrill of watching the animals pass you by so closely. You understand the scale, but you can't quite absorb how truly immense the landscape is. And because you can't see quite past the edges of the screen, there is an inevitable disconnect. You find yourself wishing that you could see past those edges or be physically present across the world in that very environmental setting. So traditional 2D photo and video will, are staples for visual communication that will never be replaced. They often only offer a limited, sheltered glimpse of a full experience. But what if you could see beyond that? What if you could experience it firsthand, too? Virtual reality brings an opportunity to bridge that communication with a real, from, by providing the brain with, a, with raw material from a real experience for a more whole and accurate simulation. And just because something works doesn't mean it shouldn't be improved. With constant innovations every day, the sky is truly the limit. Now I want to share with you a story about my friend Neil. He's an environmental conservation photographer for Nat Geo. And recently he was traveling to Alaska with a group of photographers to capture the annual caribou migration. Him and I had previously collaborated on some 360 work together. And when he told me about this expedition, I told him, Neil, you have, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You have to bring your 360 camera. Stubborn and traditional as he is, he didn't. You see, Trump had recently approved to open up these long-protected lands for oil drilling. I'd like to point out this orange area on the map here. 200,000 porcupine caribou heavily rely on these lands every year for food, protection, and birthing of their young. But with the takeover, they'll be pushed out of their calving grounds and risk dying off. So a few weeks later, the group came home with some pretty beautiful images. I love this one. But I still can't help but feel a little removed and distant from the story beneath the beauty. Now imagine this. If you could all just close your eyes with me for a minute. So imagine, one day you put on a VR headset and you're instantly transported to Alaska in the Arctic Refuge, standing in the very spot where that last image was shot. You look around, and you're the only one present. It's very quiet. You look for any signs of life, but all you see is sheer landscape within landscape. You start to make your way around, and suddenly you see a caribou herd making their way towards you, about 10 kilometers away. You sit and wait patiently and remain out of their way. And moments later, they pass you by, and you're nearly caught on the sidelines of their journey. Fast forward, you then find yourself standing beside a river path. On the other side, there's another caribou herd crossing through. You experience a once-in-a-lifetime deep moment within the Arctic refuge, and then remove the headset. Now open your eyes. So as pictures are worth a thousand words, immersive mediums like VR and AR can be worth a thousand pictures and videos. And that exponential power is one of the reasons why I love immersive experiences. In the nonprofit space, we're seeing a lot of opportunity for this technology to be used as an empathy tool for raising awareness, fundraising, education, storytelling mission, goals, outcomes. If I were to ask you what's your favorite NGO or nonprofit, chances are the answer you'd give me is because of one, a personal co connection you have or two, an emotional connection you built through learning the organization's story or mission. If they didn't affect you personally, it's because you developed feelings from learning their, um, their story in a compelling and self-motivating way. In fact, in my experience, talking to different people, most don't even have a favorite because they simply can't decide how to choose. You can't just pick one the same way you pick a favorite color. But what if I could pull at your heartstrings through digital immersion? What if I could put you in a room and show you a series of nonprofits, each storytelling their mission and purpose through the lens of a virtual reality experience? 
taking you to the heart of their purpose. I can almost guarantee you'll come out with at least one of them having completely changed the way you feel. Now I'd like to show you a quick demo of a simple augmented reality tool we built to enhance traditional nonprofit visual storytelling. So this took place in a gallery setting, and what we did was we used the photographer's behind-the-scenes images to complement and extend the narrative through the lens of an iPad. Water's coming in on you, Neil. Just so you know. And this here, we I used think of my a photography video and filmmaking and embedded as that a way into to the start experience. a conversation. So what you can actually do is, I can I look tell around stories like this through pictures to connect see. people to wild places. So what I love about this application is that it um, it helps us understand the story beneath the images a little bit better, and in turn evokes a stronger emotional connection with the artist as well as the art. Now I'd like to switch up the um, the topic for a little bit from the nonprofit space to the for-profit space. So for instance, you run a business and you're wondering how you can leverage VR and AR to solve your industry's communication challenges. Let's use cannabis as an example because it's such a hot topic. So for instance, you're a cannabis licensed producer because that's legal here now in Canada and, you, and your company exhibits at a variety of conferences every year. But all you've got is this ordinary booth space that's not really drawing the attention and crowd that you want. And competition is higher than ever. There's just so many growers. But back at the home base, you've got these magnificent growth facilities and top quality production happening. However, because a number of constraints, location, high security, fear of contamination, and quality control, it simply isn't efficient to have thousands of people visiting your facility every day. This was a real-life scenario our company faced with a client exactly a year ago. And this is a glimpse of the outcome. Here inside our grow rooms, we have created the perfect climate to grow the perfect plant. Like any flower, there are a few key elements involved. Our technology allows us to accurately monitor and precisely control their environment. So when experiencing this in a VR headset, the 360 the panorama wraps around you and you're placed in the eyes of the camera. What this does is enable um, a sensation of feeling like you're actually transported to the facility nestled within all those plants. So regardless of your physical location, whether you're at home or at a conference or anywhere else, you can use a portable VR headset and virtually experience that very walkthrough tour in just a span of three minutes as if you were really there too. Now, not only is this a great visual and educational accessible tool for consumers. It also is a great investor experience as well as HR training experience for new hires who are potentially green to the industry or company or facility itself. So you see, immersive technologies have a relatively undiscovered power in the business consumer world. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Soon we'll start seeing more immersive learning platforms. Let's take a look at another sample of what's possible. This is a look at an AR learning platform where you can complete learning modules on cannabis-related topics. There's been a huge surge in conversation and interest in cannabis lately with the recent legalization. But a common gap we saw was that there was no proper or cohesive means of learning more about it yet. Whether you're young or old, you may suddenly want to try it, because why not? It's legal. But, um, but, communicate, but education should always be first. Is it safe? Is it healthy? What are the drawbacks? What's actually happening in my body? So this is a lot um, like sex ed, but very fun and for cannabis. <laughs> it, it augments the human experience for a more uh, gamified experience-based learning. We all know that comprehension from computer-based training is higher than classroom learning. And the more senses involved in the learning interaction, interaction, the higher the retention rate. 
Here you've got a combination of technology with experience. And this is re what's really going to drive our education in the future. Immersive technologies show no signs of slowing down. And with the ability for them to be applied to nearly any industry and accessed in today's world virtually anywhere, it truly has a global reach. Being able to show someone a past experience or take them to a distant place is so much more powerful than just telling them about it. And it's also such a great learning tool too, because we learn better through direct experience. We can now provide our brains with the raw material from a real experience and boost human cognition. We can hit you here first, so you can remember it here longer. For me, that's the real power of this technology. We're transcending communication difficulties. I'm an introvert by nature, and the more words I spend trying to explain or describe something to someone, the more energy it takes. I know, ironic that I'm doing this talk now, isn't it? But this world is all about communicating and connecting people together. And I truly believe that VR and AR will help us do it better than ever before. My team and I are continuously growing our footprint every day, and we're only starting to see the true potential of this technology. In the wise words of the Prime Minister of Dubai, one of the most technologically advanced and innovative cities in the world, the future belongs to those who can imagine it, design it, and execute it. It's not something you await, but rather create. In a world of very fast-paced innovation, I hope you leave here today inspired rather than terrified about the rise of technologies in our everyday lives. And maybe focus on how we can actually enable a more human, accessible, knowledgeable, and connected world. Thank you.